Now to work out this value of t, what we've got to remember is that the area and a velocity time graph or speed time graph represents the distance covered and we know that the area then underneath the red graph and the green graph must be exactly the same that it's got to amount to 800 units because the cars travelled 800 metres. Now these shapes here are trapeziums so therefore we can use the formula for the area of a trapezium. Hopefully you remember that because they crop up so often in, in velocity time graphs. So just basically if you've got a trapezium you've got a four-sided shape then with two parallel sides and if we call those two sides A and B and the distance between them say H then you should know that the area of a trapezium is equal to the sum of the parallel sides, that's A plus B, times the distance apart, H, all divided by 2. So, how does that fit into this then? Well, if we consider, say, P first of all, let's just say, consider P, then we've got that that area, which is 800, must be equal to the area of the trapezium. And so that's going to be the sum of the parallel sides and these two sides are the parallel sides so that will be this length which is the same as this part T plus the length of this parallel side. Well we haven't got this length here so let's just say that when they finish that T is say big T1. So we've got T plus T1. So that's the sum of the parallel sides multiplied by the distance apart. So the distance apart is going to be 25 and then we divide this all by 2. So what we've got here is an equation then with two unknowns, T and T1. So we can't solve it so we need to create another equation. So we do that by considering this one here, the graph that we had for Q. So for that one we can say consider Q, do much the same kind of thing then and we've got that 800 equals the sum of the parallel sides, so it'll be this one which is going to be 25 units long plus the one on the bottom here which is T1 put that in brackets multiply this by the distance that the parallel lines are apart which is 20 units and divide by 2 so we have our two equations now you can see that this equation has just got one unknown in T1 so we should be able to rearrange this and find out what T1 is so let's number the equations 1 and say 2 and from this one, if we were just to say from 2, we could do a bit of cancelling here, for instance. This 2 cancels into the 20 10 times. And if we divide both sides now by 10, you're going to get 800 divided by 10 gives us 80. And that's going to leave us with 25 plus T1. And so if we take 25 from both sides, we end up with T1 equaling 80 minus 25, which is 55. So that's good. We've got what T1 is now, 55 seconds. And what we can do with this is just take this value and sub T1 equals 55 into equation 1. And if we do that, we're therefore going to have 800 then equals T plus T1, T plus 55 then, T plus 55 and all of that is multiplied by 25 and divided by 2. And there's many ways that we could simplify this. What we could do is divide both sides by 25 for instance and 25 into 25 goes 1. 25 into 800 goes 
32 times. And if we now multiply both sides by 2, we therefore have 32 times 2, which is 64, equals simply t plus 55. And if we subtract 55 from both sides, you're going to end up with t equaling 9. All right? So, I hope that's given you some idea then how you can go about this.